Okay, so in this video, I wanted to talk about the exact numbers uh, behind the conversion of our garage into a livable space. So as you guys know, in, in our previous video, um, you know, I, I was talking about how, um, you know, we had this rental property and had a detached garage in the back and we wanted to see if we could convert it into a livable space and put it on Airbnb and see how much additional uh, revenue it's going to generate for us. So a few months ago, we actually decided to hire the contractors, you know, get the permits and, uh, you know, and actually get it finished. Now, uh, to, to begin with, uh, first of all, you know, the building, the, the detached garage that we had, um, already had a very solid structure so it was not falling apart or anything like that basically we just had to go inside do some stuff uh, to the outside but mostly uh, we gutted the building and we refinished the whole thing um, but obviously whenever you do something like that you have to go to the city and you have to get permits and you, you need to make sure that you can actually legally convert it uh, into a, a livable space and obviously when you go through the city then the city can add those extra square footage to your to, to your to your plans and um, that can increase the value of your property significantly so the, the first thing is obviously is we went to the city and we told them our situation and we asked them if we can actually convert it into a livable space uh, usually you have to go to uh, the planning department at your local city office and you give them the address and they'll be able to tell you exactly what you can and you can't do so uh, they told us that uh, we could not convert it into uh, a legal duplex, which we wanted to initially, but we could convert it into a livable space. And um, the difference is is basically uh, that um, in in a, in a in a livable space, which is not a duplex, it's you know, you can um, do a, pretty much anything. The only thing you cannot do is uh, run um, a 220 electrical line so you cannot have uh, a stove or a washer and dryer uh, because uh, usually those are 220 um, so other than that we could finish it uh, and we could have um, you know a, a livable space so that's what we did some of the things that the city told us uh, was number one that we had to hire a foundation company an engineer basically and they have to give us a letter of approval that you know the foundation is stable and that we can actually um, you know the, the structure is stable and we can actually go ahead and finish the place so it costed us five hundred dollars to hire an engineer to come and survey the place and give us a certificate also we had to submit drawings um, you know for the plans uh, for our uh, you know for a construction project uh, which costed us about four hundred dollars now obviously you can hire some somebody really expensive or you can hire somebody really cheap um, if you can explain them what exactly you're doing obviously we are not doing major construction this is not building a house it's just finishing the place up so the drawings are pretty simple so we paid about four hundred dollars for that now in uh, texas uh, the good thing is that you know if you are the homeowner and the house is under your name you can actually be the general contractor and you can hire all the subs uh, the subcontractors under you and uh, you can directly deal with the city and you can pull all the permits so i went ahead and spent about 750 dollars or so uh in pulling all the permits uh, there was also an additional hundred dollar fee i believe uh for homeowners uh and we have to do an application and formally become a gc which is very simple you don't have to go to any school or anything like that so um so that was an additional hundred dollars so all in all we spent about seventeen hundred and seventy dollars in just the approvals and, and and just planning phase without even touching the place which is still quite cheap compared to like california where you know it's extremely difficult to do construction and there's a lot of reports you have to do and soil testing and that kind of stuff so we are blessed in texas to be able to uh, spend less money on on or permits and and you know stuff like that okay so the first thing obviously we had to do was the demo um so we as i mentioned earlier we gutted the place you know we took all the ceilings the insulation the drywall out we also took the flooring out and we had some you know a bar there that was you know just half-ass built and we demoed everything and we basically started from scratch um you know i had one guy come one day and demoed everything i paid him a thousand dollars i believe and they demoed everything and took everything away with them so we started with a clean slate the first thing that we did was uh, do an inspection of the roof um you know there were a couple of uh leaks on the roof and we did think about uh you know 
getting a new roof but after talking to the to the roofer we decided that you know we'll just spend uh, about 550 dollars and we'll just patch the roof for now and in maybe four or five years we can go ahead and replace the roof so uh, basically we wanted to uh, keep the cost of the project down and the roof did not need to be replaced so we just spent 550 dollars and uh, that was it okay so then the next thing that we did outside was to build a fence now obviously it was it, it was a single family house so the detached garage was right behind the house so in order to uh, you know provide privacy to the people living there we decided to build a fence right in the middle uh, we have enough room in the backyard and um, we separated the two buildings so whenever there are tenants um, or airbnb guests living there they don't see each other you know uh, but we did put a small door at the end so in case we ever move there or whatnot we can always go back and forth uh, you know within the house uh, that project costed us about three thousand dollars now that was uh, pretty cheap uh, because if you do hire like a actual fencing company you know the, these days the price could be you know five to seven thousand dollars for the same thing but luckily i have a handyman uh, you know and i was able to negotiate a very good price uh, you, you know uh, for the for the for the fence so uh, all in all, three thousand dollars is great price. Now, one thing that we had to do was the front and back siding. Now, this building is eighty percent of it is brick, so we didn't have to do anything. But uh, in the front and back, uh, the siding that was installed, um, you know, was literally falling apart. So um, we had to replace it. So uh, we spent about fourteen hundred dollars, and we got some wood uh, siding, uh, painting, caulking, replacing it. So. All in all, $1,400 uh, for the siding project. Okay, so then the next big thing, um, uh, you know, that we had to do was, you know, replace the the rolling garage doors and actually put in the doors, the actual entry, entry door and the two windows and also the back door. Uh, we spent about $250 uh, for each window. Uh, we spent about $400 for each door. Now, these doors were not brand new. Uh, we went to a surplus store. I mean, they are brand new, but they're not, you know, we didn't buy them from, you know, Home Depot and we, you know, got really good pricing on that. And other than that, we had to actually frame the whole front end of the house. And, um, you know, the, the framing material costed about a thousand and we paid about a, a thousand dollars for labor to, to basically put it all together. So the front that you see, um, is basically, you know, it's quite inexpensive, you know, and, and now, um, you know, the front facade looks like an actual house. Before that, it looked like a garage and nobody could actually, you know, tell that it was, you know, a house. But now, once you change the front, then it looks like a real house. So it costed us uh, around $3,300 to do, you know, the front uh, facade of the house and the, the windows and the doors and the, you know, um, the whole nine yards. So all in all, the total money that we spent for all the things that I mentioned for the outside was $11,020. Okay, so for the inside, the biggest thing that we had to do was to put new drywall, new insulation, texture, painting, uh, that project. So uh, it costed us about $3,200 in uh, labor and about $2,000 in, in material. So the total cost for the drywall project was about uh, 5,500. Okay, now uh, another project that we had to do was to uh, run the water line. We obviously, it was a garage, it did not have any running water and also we had to put a drain. So uh, costed us uh, costed us about $3,250 to actually run uh, water supply from the main house um, into the garage and also we had to connect the, the drain to the sewer line and it was uh, you know uh, it took us a few days to do it but we were able to do it at a much cheaper cost because I was I was able to get a very very good deal uh, from a plumber that I always use so he, he cut me some slack and gave me a good pricing okay now uh, for the bathroom you know it um, the way we did it is we hired a guy who you know i've worked in the past and he told us that he'll charge us 3400 dollars to actually redo the bathrooms well when i say redo we had to really build the bathroom from scratch but we kept it very very simple we got um, a stand-up shower which is prefab cast so we don't have to do any tiling or any drain or anything like that we just bought the whole thing and we installed it we had a toilet and a vanity and a basic small toilet um, for $3,400 I think we really got a good deal there 
Okay, so uh, now for the floor, um, you know, we went to uh, floor and decor and we picked out this gray uh, modern looking tile. Um, believe it or not, it's only 89 cents a square foot and, you know, all the materials uh, literally costed us $800 and we paid um, the fo flooring subcontractor uh, about $200. So $2,800 and we had brand new floor and it, it really looks nice. You know, it's it's very easy to maintain. Um, you know, nothing happens if since something gets spilled on it. So, uh, you know, we didn't want to go with carpet. F tile is the, is the way to go, especially if you have a rental property, Airbnb. It's very easy to maintain. Okay, now, so for the, the kitchen, obviously, uh, this being uh, a mother-in-law suite, um, an ADU, we are not allowed to run a 220 line there so we didn't have to put any uh, you know stove there uh, we did not put any oven we could not do it so uh, we we kept it really simple um, we spent about a thousand dollars for the cabinets um, we spent another thousand dollars for uh, a countertop then we paid 750 dollars for the granite guy to come and install it and he did a great job then we had to pay around a thousand dollars to actually install the sink the final thing that we um did was the backsplash um we spent uh 350 dollars for the the beveled subway tile that you see and um i had a, a buddy of mine come in and charged me 750 dollars to do the backsplash which is again a uh, pretty pretty decent price so all in all we spent four thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars for the whole kitchen project and and it, it looks pretty good everything you know looks clean simple modern and i think money well spent now um let's talk about electrical um electrical uh, gets expensive um you know first of all we had to install a sub panel um where i can have a, a dedicated breaker for the garage um so that costed us three thousand dollar which obviously we have to hire uh you know a licensed electrician to do it you don't want to have your buddy do it or you know somebody who's claiming to do it you need to have somebody licensed and it's very very important to hire a licensed plumber and licensed electrician the rest is not that difficult but um, these two things you you want to make sure that you have somebody who's licensed so three thousand dollars for sub panels we also spent twelve hundred dollars on a split air conditioner uh, which is the cheapest option you don't want to install a brand new ac uh, typical you know vent and duct ac uh, because it's quite expensive so the cheaper option is go with a split air conditioner and then we had uh, the same electrician come in and add different ceiling pot lights you know um, plugs switches uh, wherever we wanted um, for an additional twenty five hundred dollars so the total that we got uh, f you know for the electrical project was sixty seven hundred dollars now lastly obviously if we want to do an airbnb we want to make sure that you know the the place is staged right so um the easiest way to do it is you do not want to buy brand new furniture from an expensive furniture place. You can literally go to Facebook Marketplace and, um, you know, buy everything that you need used, but good quality. And luckily, I do have a box truck that I use for other business that I have. And um, I was able to spend closer to $2,000, I would say, and I bought all the furniture all the appliances that we have um, the air fryer um, you know the the fridge um, then we have uh, the tables the carpets the the day beds that we have the the sofa cum bed um, everything um, all the supplies the kitchen supplies the knives the the spices um, you know the cutting boards and all sorts of things um, for under two thousand dollars so if you add it all up we spend about thirty nine thousand five hundred and twenty dollars for the whole project it's still higher than what I was expecting. Um, I, I I thought that I could get it done in, you know, closer to thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. But obviously, things always cost more. We generate about fifteen hundred dollars a month um, from from this little unit, and after you take out all the you know expenses and the utilities, we are left with about twelve hundred dollars of cash flow um, month on month. Now, if you uh, you know add it add it all up and then divide it by the amount of money we spent. The return on the on the the money that we spend is 36 percent from now on i've decided that if i ever buy a, a rental property or any sort of residential real estate i would uh buy a house that have a, 
a detached garage uh, which i can convert and that is kind of like adding value um to an to a real estate project um and 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 the, and the funny thing is like everybody can do it but a lot of people don't want to do it they try to get the best deal on an auction uh, even though you can buy the right house at a, at a standard price and you can spend another 30 40 50 thousand dollars and literally 4x your return 5x 6x your return and in that's a much easier route you know um if you want to buy a house like this um you can easily find a house like that but going on an auction and trying to do cold calling and uh, you know sending all these mailers out to find one in a thousand house where you save fifty thousand dollars it's just too much work you know this way i think it's much easier and a lot of people are already sitting in a rental property where they can just do that and instantly increase their uh, value um, and increase their cash flow so uh, that that was uh, that was it guys um, i hope it was helpful i hope um, you know i was able to give you a better estimate of how much and what to expect when you're converting your uh, two car garage and um, if you have any other questions just let me know again every situation is different but i was just sharing my particular situation so uh, good luck whoever is trying to do that and if you have any questions uh, let me know but thank you so much for watching guys and uh, we'll see you next time